Good evening, everyone. Are you guys excited about tonight? We just want to welcome you all in our online family. And I just, can we just posture our hearts tonight? It's going to be really, really good. I feel like the Lord is already here. Um, so I just want to share something that I've been meditating on and someone, John, um, spoke this in the back room, but this is in Second Chronicles, and this is after Solomon built the ark. And this is what they gathered together and prayed. And it was the duty of the trumpeters and singers to make themselves heard in unison, in praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. And when the song was raised with trumpets and cymbals and other musical instruments in praise to the Lord, for he is good and his steadfast love endures forever, the house the house of the Lord was filled with the clouds so the priests could not stand to minister. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your steadfast love endures forever, Lord, that you be glorified tonight, Jesus. Father, that you be glorified tonight. Father, I thank you that in one accord, as a church, as a body of Christ in unison, we will go after the one thing tonight, Jesus, and seek your face, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just thank him, you guys? He's so worthy of it, you guys. Thank you, Lord. We worship you tonight, Lord. We worship you tonight. Give praise to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Yes. Come on, let's just continue that praise. Just lift up a great shout to him. Come on. Oh, we come in telling you thank you. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. We're here tonight because you're good. Oh, we're living and breathing because of the goodness of the Lord. Because of the goodness of the Lord. Oh, thank you for your goodness, Lord. You are good, you are good.
God, some of you are waiting on a song, but the Lord has put one in your heart. Lift that one to Him right now. Oh, let's sing a song to Him. Oh, you're good, Lord. You're so good and your love endures forever. You're so good and your love endures forever. You're so good and your love endures forever. I worship you, Lord. Oh, I worship you, Jesus. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you glory and honor. Oh, oh. Glory to the King. Glory to the King. Oh. Just a song from you. Just lift up a song right here. Come on, just our voice. And I'll sing because you are good And I'll dance because you are good And I'll shout because you are good You are good to me 
And I'll sing because you are good And I'll dance because you are good And I'll shout because you are good You are good to me And I'll sing
seen what you can do Oh God of wonders Your power has no end mm. The things you've done before In greater measure You will do again Cause there's no prison wall you can't break through No mountain you can't move All things are possible And there's no broken body you can't raise No soul that you can't save All things are possible The dark is not
your eyes, forget about this room, forget about everyone around you and just minister to Jesus. Pour your oil on him. has found me just as I Changed by your love. 
grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed but alive in your hands. Singing majesty. of your majesty oh we're singing majesty majesty your grace has found me just as I am empty handed but Jesus, we worship you. Come on. Open your heart. Let it let a river just flow from your lips. I can 
Every voice. spirit here for the next minute. Come on. Just surrender. Just surrender. Get caught up in his beauty and surrender. Sing in the spirit all over the room.
together. Come on, turn your eyes. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things on earth will grow strangely in the light of His glory and grace. Oh, turn your eyes, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look for in His wonderful face. Everyone worship. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, Jesus.
Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Oh, stay with him now. Stay with him now. Stay with him. Stay with him. Stay with him. No flesh shall glory in my presence. Mm, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Put his name on your lips, will you, church? Again. Your name, O Lord, is as an ointment poured forth. Stop screaming, stop screaming. Every voice. Holy and anointed one. Holy and anointed one. Close your eyes. Sing Jesus. He's here now. Again, sing that again. Let's go higher. Let's go higher, church. Holy. Again, again, every voice. Your spirit 
just a little Jesus Jesus sing Candice come on Jesus sing Sarah sing every voice every voice holy to heaven I'm telling you there's a river that's about to 
break forth in this room. Jesus said, if we would drink, that that river would flow. Turn to him right now with all of your attention. Say, how do I drink of this river? By looking at him and loving him. Look to Jesus right now and just begin to worship him for the next minute or two. You begin to worship. You drink of that river. It springs forth. And that river will carry us exactly where we need to go tonight. It will carry you for the rest of your life. That's right. And everything that river touches, that which is dead, comes to life. Oh, let the river flow tonight. Let the river flow tonight, Holy Spirit. Let that wonderful, wonderful presence of the Holy Spirit, that heavenly dove, so tender, so wonderful, the Spirit of life. Everything he touches, that which is dead, shall come to life. Turn the lights on in here, Jesus. Shine in us. Shine in us. Oh, just forget about everything. Bless the Lord. Just love on him right here. This is why he came. This is why you came. You did not come for me or to hear a worship team. You came for Jesus. Now that he's here, just yield. Just yield. You are welcome here, Lord. This is your house. We are your house. We are your people. The sheep of your pasture. Have us. Touch your people tonight. The flesh profits nothing. It is the Spirit who gives life. Wonderful wind of heaven. Blow through this room. Have your way. Drink deep. You can't look at me and drink. Look to Jesus. Drink deep. Let the walls come down around your heart. You can trust him. Let him break the box. Take the prerequisites, the preconceived ideas of how he should touch you tonight. Just come to him. Leave the rest to him. Leave the rest to him. Don't worry about how it might look. He's the gentle shepherd who brings you to the encounter. And he's the shepherd who walks you through it. Trust him tonight. He's good. Father, we collectively say tonight, as your family, as your people, as your children, that there is nothing like your presence. There is no one like you, and there are none beside you. Can we just lift our hands as a prophetic act, declaring this? There is no one like you. And there are none beside you. 
we, we declare this, Lord, as your people, that your presence is life. You are life. And your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, pleasure forevermore. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Strengthen your people with your joy. Holy joy. Thank you, Lord. Now for the next five minutes, without anyone moving around, I want you to sit in the presence of God like children, right at the feet of Jesus, ready to hear his word. Literally, I don't, you need to learn how to tend to the presence of God. This is not the time to talk or get up and move around. If you came just for the music, that's an idol. That's an idol. We come for Jesus. This is not a concert. We love His Word. His Word is life. So I want to wait till everyone finds a seat. And I want you to sit and listen to the Word of the Lord like Mary of Bethany. Tonight, my dear friend Dave Papavisi, in just a few moments, is going to minister to you. And I'm going to introduce him once again. You, you know him, but I want to honor him properly. But I want to talk to you about your soul quickly. Just listen to the words of Jesus. John chapter 5 It's amazing I'm going to begin in verse 17 Now while I'm speaking Listen very carefully I want you to either have your eyes closed Or looking straight at me if you're looking at Jesus with your eyes closed, it's much better than looking at me. You know, Paul said, I daily put my body under subjection. Lest by any means I be a castaway myself. We have to learn how to be in the presence of God. How to dwell in His glory. John 5, 17 says, But Jesus answered them, My Father has been working until now, and I have been working. Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. And then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he sees, for whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that you might marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to whom he will. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son, that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes and that word belief is to put all trust in and to cast your life upon. That's what the Greek word means. To throw your life at the feet of incomplete trust. 
believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly I say to you the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For the Father has life in himself and so he has granted the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. I want you to look at verse 25. Most assuredly, this is Jesus, God speaking, saying, Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Listen, friend. Look me in the eye. Jesus points to a day in the future where the dead will hear his voice and they will come forth out of the graves. He says the day is coming, but then he says, and now is. I tell you every week, Jesus doesn't change lives. He raises the dead. He replaces lives. It's much better than an adjusted life. Jesus spoke of a judgment, listen carefully, and condemnation that the world is under for this reason, and he gives us the reason, that the light of the world has come, but the world has chosen darkness. Then he tells us why. Because he said the light reveals their sin, and they can hide that sin in the darkness. Men and women choose distance between them and the Lord because they want to hide their sin. They understand, maybe they don't, I should say, sometimes without knowing. The thought is, if I stay away from God, His light will not shine on me. Therefore, my sin will not be seen. And I can hide my sin. I'll choose darkness to hide my sin. But I have news for you tonight. God can see through the darkness. <laughs> God can see a long way. Well, who are we hiding the sin from? Certainly not the Lord. David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're there. Is it the Lord we're hiding our sin from? Or ourselves? Or the people around us? I have good news for you tonight. This God who wants to shine his light on your sin so that you can actually see it for what it is, it is a death sentence. Nothing less. Sin is a death sentence. Sin is not a weakness. The soul that sins, the Bible says, must die. So sin is much more than a problem. Sin will kill you. It will kill you now and will sentence you to eternal death. But this is what I want to say to you tonight. There's no need to hide your sin from God. He already sees it. 
The Jesus I'm talking about will take your sin and destroy it. It will be under the microscope of heaven. It already is. The light of God is in the room. I don't need to go down the list of everything you've done wrong. You know already. The good news of the gospel is, is you don't have to cleanse you. The whole point of redemption is a perfect one for a less perfect. You don't have to fix this problem. As a matter of fact, you cannot fix this problem. You are sitting in God's house tonight, in His presence. He is a merciful God. We are in the hour of grace and mercy. What I'm going to ask you to do tonight is to be real with the Lord who already sees the life and sin that you're trying to hide from Him, hoping He can't see it. So you come to Him tonight. Come to Jesus. In the light of His presence, bring your sin into the light and let Him remove it from you forever. If not, everything evil that dwells in darkness will be your portion. Psalm 91 says that pestilence walketh in the darkness. Disease, sickness, they belong in the dark. Fear belongs in the dark. Pride belongs in the dark. Sexual sin belongs in the dark. Addiction belongs in the dark. That's where it thrives. I'm going to ask you tonight to bring it to the light, to the one who will not condemn you should you bring it to him. This is what Jesus said, the Son of Man has not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. If you're hiding your sin from Jesus, it's just because you don't know what He's like. He's the Savior who bleeds and dies to cleanse the world of their sin. All I ask of you tonight is that you throw everything out the window, everything you ever knew, about Christianity that is not like Jesus and never look at it again. And I ask you to be real in the holy presence of God and come to a loving Jesus who will set you free forever and give himself to you in return and nail your wickedness to the tree and it will stay dead. With every head bowed and eye closed. You say, Michael, that's me. I just want you to put your hands up. Children, that goes for you too. You say, I want to come to Jesus. Fully want to be free. Lift your hands to heaven. Say, Michael, that's me. I want to be free. God bless you. Listen. God bless you. Listen. If you brought someone tonight that you know needs Jesus, I want you to look them in the eye right now and say, do you need to give your heart to Jesus tonight? Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. Be bold. Step out. I want to talk to a second group of people tonight. Maybe it's been a long time since you've been in the presence of God. You didn't realize how far you drifted. You come home too tonight. You know, the Bible says that Jesus doesn't know how to deal with a lukewarm life. He actually vomits it out. And I just want to say this. You can't vomit something out that is not within. This is a daily life with Jesus. And so in just a moment, I'm going to ask the people who raised their hand to come forward, the people who wish they did, and those who know they are not walking closely with Jesus as they once did. Friends, listen, the hour is too late to be a foolish virgin. I want everyone to just stand, please. If you raised your hand 
or you wish you did, come to the one who loves you, whose arms are outstretched. If you've fallen out of love with Jesus and you want to burn again, young and old, come forward now. Come to the Lord Jesus. Come on, come. Get out of your seats. Get out of your seats. Come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. Come get clean. Come to the one who loves you. The one who will never leave you. Come. Come. Come to this merciful King. Come. They're still coming. Come on. If you're wondering, if you're in your seat tonight, struggling, wondering, wondering if you should come to Jesus, come. Come to Jesus tonight. Children, if you feel like you need to come to the Lord, look at your mom and dad and say, Mom and dad, I want to come to the Lord Jesus tonight. Come. Come close. Ushers, help me. Help me, ushers. Come close, guys. Come close. Come close. Come close. Come close. Come close. They're still coming. They're still coming. Come on. Give the Lord praise. That's right. Come on. Come on, young lady. Come to Jesus. Don't resist. I told you before, there was a day where I would refuse to beg people to come to him. But the hour's too late. The door of the ark is about to close. And I will gladly beg men and women to come. Come. Come to Jesus tonight. Come to Jesus tonight. For those of you who come forward, I want you to look me in the eye. The Lord is here. He is in the room. You made the right decision. And the reason you chose him tonight is because he chose you. He chose you because he loves you. He chose you to be his own. And so this is not about walking through a prayer. This is about coming to him. And if while I'm praying, you're in your seat, you say, I want to come to the Lord. I am bound by sin. I am tired of hiding. I don't want to live in the dark anymore. I want to bring my life into the light. You'll not interrupt me. You come forward even if we're in the middle of this prayer. We're going to pray now. And all I'm going to ask you to do is talk to him the best you can. You can all do that. And he'll receive you. I promise. Let's pray. I want the whole house to pray in agreement. Pray out loud. Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you. And I confess my sin. Forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Jesus, I believe that you came to the earth, born of a virgin, lived a perfect and holy life revealing the Father perfectly. I believe that you suffered and died on the cross and shed your holy blood to redeem my soul and to give me eternal life. And I believe, Lord Jesus, that you were buried to destroy the grave. And I believe, Lord Jesus, that you are raised from the dead. And you are alive forevermore, proving you are God Almighty, the Son of the living God. And I believe, Lord Jesus, that you have ascended to the right hand of the Father, and that you are returning again as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so tonight, I bring my sin, I bring my life out of the darkness into your glorious light. And I repent of my sin. I turn from my sin. I turn from the ways of this world. And I renounce the devil himself. And I confess Jesus Christ 
as the Lord and Savior of my life, I am yours. You are mine. Have your way in my life. Hallelujah. Say this out loud. I am forgiven. I am born again. I belong to Jesus forever and ever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, for those of you who've come forward, listen carefully. This is not the end, this is the beginning of being a disciple. There are a few things you need to do to be a faithful, victorious disciple of Jesus. And you can be, young and old. Number one, you need to get a Bible and read it every single day. Do not let a day go by where you do not feast on the Word of God. It is the bread of life. Number two, pray every day. Go into your room, close the door, and just be with Jesus. He'll teach you the rest. Number three, you need to be baptized in water. I think our next baptismal service is in a few weeks. We're happy to do that. I'm really good at it. Keep you down long enough to get you all cleaned up. It's very powerful and it's not a recommendation. It is a command that severs the old man and the perverse nature of the age. It cuts you off from it. And you come forth from the water in the glorious resurrection light of God. Amen? Amen. I know, I know. I get excited thinking about it as well. Number four. Number four. You need to give your heart to the Lord with the people. We don't live this thing alone. We were never meant to. We are called to walk with people, brothers and sisters in the Lord. That is called church. Find people who love Jesus more than you. Hang out with them. Open your heart to them. The days of attending church must end, and the days of being the church and living as the church <laughs> must happen. We'd love to serve you here. It would be our joy if God leads you somewhere else. Make sure it's a church that believes the whole Bible, the whole thing, even the challenging stuff. It's about God, so it's going to challenge us. <laughs> Who wants to worship a God they understand completely? Amen? Lastly, Jesus made a promise, the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to pray that over you before we end tonight. I just feel like we're supposed to wait. There will come a moment, I believe, tonight of mass impartation. When I pray, I want all of you who came forward and everyone in the house, the Bible teaches us to be filled with the Holy Spirit, not get filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled. Jesus made a promise. He said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you to be a witness. We're going to pray that tonight. Amen. Okay. After service, would you uh, come up here quickly, Dion, so they can see your face? This is Dion. He's been through three years of Jesus school. He's an amazing, amazing servant of God. At, outside that table, outside that exit over there, there will be a table for new believers. Dion will be there after service. Please find him. Do not be embarrassed. And just promise me you're going to get, go get to him, okay? All he's going to do is serve you. Amen? Amen. Okay. Can we give the Lord praise for what he's done? Come on. Uh, team, I want, I want us all to find someone and, and serve them. You're welcome to go back to your seats, team. I want you to welcome them home. Church, welcome them home. Go back to your seats. What an awesome, awesome, awesome blessing. Can we thank our worship team?
How many of you are ready to give to the Lord? Come on, come on. I said, how many of you are ready to give to the Lord? Can we put that rendering of the building up just very quickly, the one I like? Yeah, that's the one I like. Well, as I don't know if you know or not, hopefully you do, but we closed on our property completely. We've closed. We own it. It is the Lord's property, and we are beginning and moving quickly, and so God is doing wonderful things. So I just want to keep this in front of you, Father. Come on, stretch your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for every penny, that this would be a house of glory and a house of your presence, that the nations would be blessed and that Jesus would be revealed, that our city would be blessed by your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you're watching tonight online, I want to thank you for watching, for tuning in. Some of you stay up all night from around the world just to be part of this. It means the world is so humbling. We love you. If this ministry has blessed you and you'd like to give tonight, you can text GIVE to that number on your screen. For everybody in the house tonight, you can text GIVE as well to the number on that screen. And if you'd like to give by cash or check, would you just raise your hand if you prefer to give that way? By the way, this is the perfect atmosphere to give in. Let me just say it is foolish to walk into God's presence if you are able to give and not open your heart in that way. It is actually a foolish thing to do because it is an expression of worship and it's a powerful, powerful, powerful thing to do in God's presence. So if you'd like to give by check or cash and you need an envelope, would you just lift your hand? Our ushers will get, get those to you. There we go. We've got a few there. We've got some up top there, guys. What an amazing night. I hope you're in for it tonight. Yeah, we have Dave Pompavisi with us tonight, my dear friend. I'm so excited. It's going to be awesome. We have Pastor Paul Teske with us tonight. It's going to be awesome. We have Pastor Randy Needham with us tonight and Lucy. Uh, you're going to be ministered to in a very powerful way. We are going to tag team and follow the presence of the Lord. So I hope you plan on getting zapped to the uttermost tonight. Okay. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Bless your people. Protect them. Bless every pastor, every businessman, every missionary, every preacher, every mom and dad, every single person listening. Protect them and increase them for your name's sake so that Jesus would be greatly glorified in the nations of the earth. And I declare a blessing over all of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You're welcome to rush the buckets and give this way if you'd like. We'll be back in just a moment. In the crushing, in the pressing, you were making a new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you were breaking. Every voice, every voice.
honor tonight to introduce my dear friend, uh, David Papavisi. Before, before you go wild, which I do expect you to, and love. Uh, Dave is a man of God, and um, I trust him with this pulpit. I would trust him with my family. He and his wife, Danielle, are the cream of the crop. They don't get any better. Uh, their life proves it. They left everything in Chicago and moved their lives to Iraq, and have been there for nine years, uh, revealing Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. God is doing amazing things with them, and I'll leave some of the testimonies to Dave should the Lord lead you in that direction, but most importantly, I'm really picky as to who I invite here because of what God's doing. You know, I actually received a prophetic word in Reading before we started these, which started as Jesus Nights, then became the church. Uh, a real prophetic woman said, God's going to give you a baby, not a real one. <laughs> no, we're not. No, and don't start praying for it because it's not going to happen. All right. But, but this woman said, we were eating lunch. She said, God's going to give you a baby. And the thing about babies is you have to protect them in the early stages. If you don't, they can get sick and die. And she said, protect the move of God when you get back to Orlando. And I've had to learn how to do that, and it's been a learning experience. But I, I am in, not only, not only do I trust Dave, I am honored to have him at this pulpit because of the man of God that he is and how he loves his wife and the father he is to his children, his deep dedication to the Word of God, his deep dedication to the call of God on his life. He's a real friend. He's been a covenant friend to me and a faithful, faithful friend. And so I want us all to stand. The Bible teaches us to honor and to give honor to whom honor is due. I want us all to stand and welcome my dear friend, David Papa VC, can we do that? can be seated. I just asked Mike how long. He said, whatever you want. <laughs> so now I have no idea how long. Thank you, Jesus. I believe um, tonight is going to end with, as, as Michael shared, people in this room being filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. That's what I saw during worship in my spirit, and, I, and then Michael mentioned it. And I believe that that is, that is a, a very real word for us tonight, this particular house, but really the church of Jesus in the nations. So may the Lord speak to our hearts tonight. May he, may he display the beauty of Jesus, even by the gifts of the Spirit, inspiration and revelation and power. As Michael mentioned, we've, we've been serving the Lord in the Middle East, in Iraq, for, for nine years. This fall will make nine years. And, and what Michael did here just moments ago, preaching the gospel, is, is, is a large part of what we do. We preach the gospel to people in Iraq, people from Syria that live in Iraq, people from Iran, primarily to Iraqis. And, and Jesus is revealed, and amongst them, through a variety of ways, whether it's face-to-face -face at a table in a cafe, whether it's through our online platform of evangelism, whether it's in an outreach or visiting a sick person that heard that prayer in the name of Jesus heals. Amongst those, some turn, repent, place their faith in Jesus, and then they gather together in the context of family and church. 
The goal of God in redemption is to gather for himself, is to call to himself a people that will be filled with his spirit. Amen? That would be filled with his glory. You guys can turn to Mark chapter 11. And as you do, I think all of us have experienced the presence of God. Amen? All of us, all of us have experienced the presence of God. But I would submit to you, if you don't already know, that there are measures to the presence of God. There are measures to the presence of God. There are grades or degrees of glory. We see it when God called the people of Israel out of Egypt to Mount Sinai to covenant with the people. The reason you got born again, some of you that responded to the message today, the reason Israel was set free from slavery and captivity, according to Moses, by the mouth of the, of the Lord himself, is that they would go up to the mountain and worship him. Amen? And it's there that they don't just worship for, for a moment. They don't just sing a song for a moment. God covenants with them there. In essence, he marries them there. And we see that there are measures of his glory. Moses is allowed all the way up the mountain, but not all the people. Then we see the tabernacle. God, now they're called to move into the promised land, and God wants to move with them. And he gives them very specific instructions on how to build a tabernacle where he will dwell in their midst. God is into the how. Amen. He's jealous about, it's not just the what, it's the how as well. And then we see in the, in the, 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 the schematics of the, of, of the tabernacle, there's an outer court, there's an inner court, there's a holy of holies. And the deeper you move in, the greater the intensity of God's presence is. Listen, we can all say God is everywhere. God is omnipresent. And it's true. But there's a, there's a vast difference between the omnipresence of God and the personally felt presence of God. Amen? And there's a difference between the personally felt presence of God, you may feel God all over you. The person next to you may feel nothing, right? The omnipresence of God is we can say God is everywhere right now. He's in every bar in Orlando. He's everywhere. God is, God is in every continent. God is in the ocean. He's at the bottom of the ocean. He's in space. Yes, God is everywhere. But the felt presence of God is different. But even with the felt presence of God, there's a difference between what you sense and what the person next to you senses. That's different than the manifest presence of God. Right? The glory of God. Nobody walking into the Holy of Holies would have said, I don't feel anything. Right? Nobody. Maybe on the outer parts of the outer courts, if they didn't look up and see the fire burning. But maybe the fire didn't do it for them. You know, it's interesting. Familiarity can breed contempt. Maybe, but once, once they started to get close to the presence and the glory of God, men begin to tremble. So Mark chapter 11 Starting in Mark chapter 11, Jesus, it says in verse 1, drew near to Jerusalem, I'm reading from the ESV, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives. So Jesus is drawing near. The Mount of Olives is very, very close to Jerusalem. How many of you guys have been to Israel before? You can see where the temple was from the top of the Mount of Olives. And Bethany historically, was about two miles away from Jerusalem. So Jesus draws near, and we'll skip down for the sake of time. And what happens in the story is that 
Jesus finds the foal or the offspring of a donkey, which means up to about a year, maybe a couple of years old, and he gets on this beast of burden, this very humble animal. He doesn't find the most majestic horse or in the Middle East, camel in the land, right? He finds a humble donkey's colt and he rides into Jerusalem. And as he does, the people are celebrating, but we know the story. These same people that are celebrating now when it's trendy, because everybody else is celebrating, will be the same ones that vote crucify when it's not trendy, right? That's what happens. So Jesus chooses intentionally this animal because he's a meek and humble king. And he goes down in verse 11, he enters Jerusalem and when he goes into the temple, he looks around at, at everything as it was already late and then he goes back to Bethany with the 12. So he comes to Bethany. Most Bible scholars believe that Jesus spent his, the last week of his life in Bethany. It's where we read the, the farewell discourse, the John 13 through 17 took place in Bethany. A place where Jesus feels at home. Jesus feels at home in Bethany. Now I know that, that that's a special word to this house. Right, Bethany? Just, Jesus feels at home in Bethany. But it's interesting because the temple was the house of God in the earth. Not just in Israel, in the earth. And Jesus is two miles up the road. God's desire has always been to marry the heavens and the earth. The purpose of salvation is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It's a people that would be possessed by God on the earth. The overlap of Eden and earth, where men and God become one by the Spirit of God coming to dwell within. Amen? How many of you guys believe it is God's will to grant a mighty baptism in the Holy Spirit to his church in these last days. Amen. Amen. That's good. Bethany. Some scholars will say that Bethany means house of poverty, but it can have a double meaning. It can be house of figs. Beit Ani. House of figs. So let's continue to read. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he's going back to Jerusalem now. This is day two. He was hungry. Do you remember in John chapter four, where Jesus is sitting by a well in the heat of the day, waiting for a Samaritan woman, asking for a drink because he's thirsty. Jesus enters in voluntarily into our weaknesses, but in the midst of it expresses his heart's desire. She was thinking primarily cup of water. He was primarily thinking the satisfaction of the worship that his creation brings to his heart. So Jesus is hungry, but what is he hungry for? Well, he's looking for figs. Right? He's, he's looking at a fig tree. It says from a distance, he sees a fig tree. Remember, Bethany means house of figs. House of lowliness, Jesus came in on the colt of a donkey, house of figs. Jesus is hungry and he looks at a distance at a fig tree in leaf. He went to it to see if he can find anything on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And he says to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Now you may listen to that and say, why was Jesus so upset 
it clearly states it was not the season for figs. Well, the problem is this. He is the creator. That tree is the creation. That tree was created to respond to the creator. The tree was created for one purpose, to reveal the majesty of God by birthing fruit for the glory of the creator. And when the creator is present, when the manifest presence of God comes, where is the offering? Where is the offering of the fruit of our lives that he's looking for? Jesus was on his way back to Jerusalem the place he should have went to go lay his head. Again, that's the house of God. Now when Jesus is on the earth, he becomes the temple. And we know when Jesus ascends, we now corporately become the temple of the living God. God dwells not in buildings, although we use them, we need them. God dwells in a people. Amen? God is going to his house, what should be his house, but he wants to know if this house is anything like Bethany. He goes in the evening and he scans it with his eyes of fire that we read about in Revelation 2 and 3 when Jesus walks in the midst of the churches. He scans. He doesn't just see, like Michael said, our sins. He sees our intentions. He sees our hidden motives and our pride. Not just what we do, why we do it, what we're looking for. Jesus was a man of sorrows accustomed to suffering and rejection. When Jesus was born, he was born in Bethlehem. And there was no place, no place, no house that was available. Jesus was to be born, the Son of God, the greatest gift God can give to his creation. But there's no house that would host him. Jesus was raised in a city called Nazareth. And when he comes back to his own town, it says the people that he grew up with are offended at him. He, he was not welcomed in his own hometown. He sends out his disciples two by two and he himself goes and he travels itinerantly. He preaches the gospel of the kingdom all throughout Israel. And often, often, they ask him to leave. He casts out the legion from the man, the tombs of the Gadarenes, and they say, leave our region, go. He sends out his disciples into the towns around Samaria, and they don't want him to come. He can't come by through that way. And so James and John say, let us call upon fire from heaven, because they're rejecting you. Jesus is, Jesus is accustomed to being rejected as a man on the earth. Jesus comes to Jerusalem. And he weeps over Jerusalem and he says, how long I have desired to gather you, but you are not willing. He was looking for a Bethany. He was looking for a Bethany. What was so significant about Bethany? I heard Jess preached on this a couple of weeks ago, so I won't get into too much of it. What was so significant about Bethany? A family that we know of. Maybe other things, but for sure, the thing that the scriptures is abundantly clear about, there was a family there that made Jesus feel at home. There was a brother and a couple of sisters that made Jesus feel at home. We know Jesus even as, was it this morning you preached about Lazarus? Yes, you, you, you referenced him. It's, it's in Bethany that Jesus raises Lazarus from the, death, from, from the dead. It's in Bethany that Mary breaks the alabaster vial. You know, once you break a vial, you can't reseal it. You can't reseal a broken vial. It's not like she sprayed a few. She's like, well, I want to make sure I save some for later. She broke the vial. Right? A year's worth of wages. What was most to be treasured, she placed upon him. She poured upon him. Anything of worth 
that God may have graced us with. God, we pour it upon you as an expression of love because love gives extravagantly to the object of its affection. It's not just the feeling. Listen, love is accompanied by feelings, but love is much greater than just mere emotion. It's a voluntary decision in our will to give all. So he comes to Jerusalem in verse 15, and he enters the temple and he begins to drive out those who sold and those who bought in the temple. He overturns the tables of money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. And he was teaching them saying, is it not written that my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. And the chief priests and the scribes heard it. They were seeking for a way to destroy him, for they feared him, because all the crowd was astonished at his teaching. And then when evening came, they went out of the city. Jesus comes to what should be the house of God on the earth, but he finds it's nothing like Bethany. He finds that although all the trappings of the house of God are present, the how on a heart level is missing. And so Jesus does what he often did throughout his ministry. He gives definition. Jesus gives definition. When we read in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, Jesus talking about the intent of the law, he says, listen, I haven't come to destroy the law. I have come to fulfill the law. But then Jesus gives the intention behind the law. He says things like, you have said that you should not murder, but I say to you, if you have, if you have hatred in your heart towards your brother, you're a murderer on the inside. I say, oh, I'm sorry, you have heard it said, you should not commit adultery, but I say, if you lust on the inside of your heart, inside of your heart, you've committed adultery. Why is that? Because lust takes. Love gives. Love is, a, lust is obsessed with gratifying itself. Love is intent on the benefit and the good of another. So Jesus, he, he gives definition and definition is important. We need definition. When God creates all of creation, he gives definition. He gives definition to man, to woman, and then Adam as a co-regent, ruling underneath God's sovereignty, starts to give definition to animals and the way that creation itself works together unto the glory of God. So Jesus gives definition and he says, listen, my house has been redefined by man. And, and two things, maybe more, but at least two things stand out to me. He finds them doing what? All the trappings of worship, but not what he desires. They have treated sacred things as common. And they are treating worship, which is giving unto him, in a way to benefit themselves. So they take sacred things and they treat them as common things, and instead of making it about God and others, they make it about themselves. But in what way? In three ways. As it relates to house, as it relates to prayer, and as it relates to nations. God calls his house on the earth the kind of house that he wants to go and dwell in. Not omnipresence kind of house, right? The bottom of hell, according to Psalm 139, has that. I don't want that. Right? I don't want that kind of presence. Yes, felt presence, but even more, I don't want to be on the outside of the outer courts. The new Jerusalem is the holy of holies that descends from the earth. That is our future. That's our destiny. God dwelling with men. The manifest presence of God. A house like Bethany. Amen? House, prayer, and nations. What does that mean? 
I want to submit a couple of thoughts to you tonight. I believe house speaks about family. The last verse that we see in the old covenant pointing to the new covenant, the last verse in Malachi chapter 4, is that before the great and terrible day of the Lord, God will send Elijah, and we know it to be also the spirit of Elijah, and turn the hearts of fathers back to sons and the hearts of sons back to fathers so that God would not smite the land with a curse. Before the return of the Lord, God will reveal in the earth the revelation of family. And the reason he will do so is because God himself is a family. He is father, he is son, and he is spirit. God is a family of one. God is one, but he's three persons. Everybody knows that, right? That's, that's an issue in the Middle East. That's, one of the, that's actually the main issue in the Middle East. They're offended with the fact, well, I talk about this all the time. They're offended by the fact that God can be a family, but God can be one. But in, listen, in the last generation, God will pour out his spirit and reveal, even as Mike was preaching about this morning, what did you call it, the Trinitarian conversation? The Trinitarian conversation. The closer we get to him, we recognize what is, what, who do we worship? What have we gotten ourselves into? This is, this is much bigger than what I even understood. I didn't even understand what I was saying yes to when I came to that altar. And I'm listening by the spirit of father speaking to his son by the spirit back to the father about a people. God is a family of one. And it creates creation to bear his image. So he creates a man, but he says, it's not good that you're alone. Let me create a woman for you. And then it says, they become one. They're not the same person. They become one. And the goal of these people is that they would enter into the promise of redemption to be filled with the spirit, justified, glorified. Why? So that the son can have a bride and that the father can have children. Amen. God is the God of family. We live in a day and age where there is an attack against family more than I've ever seen in my 40 years on the earth. The spirit of this age is trying to redefine family. Redefining biblical sexuality. Redefining biblical masculinity. Redefining biblical femininity. Attacking the family unit. At a base level, the church is family made up of multiple families. House, God is concerned with family. Family's not an afterthought. Family's not a peripheral issue in the kingdom of God. Family's foundational to the revelation of who God himself is. How can God dwell in a house that doesn't look like him? God is family. He cares about our marriages. He cares about our children the way we raise them. He cares about the way we raise our children. Raise up your children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. I don't care what the, what the local... <laughs> I don't care what they say. What does the word of God say about how to raise your children? Listen, seek the scriptures. We don't just go about just kind of in the dark, just trying to figure things out. No, no, intentionally pray and fast for your children, read the scriptures, make decisions that will reflect the value systems of the age to come. God's house is a house. When Jesus speaks in John 14 through 17, the farewell discourse or the upper room discourse as it's called, I believe it's the second longest uninterrupted portion of Jesus speaking in the New Testament, the first being the Sermon on the Mount. He starts out in chapter 14, verse 1 and 2, with, in my father's house, there are many rooms. He's about to leave and he wants to have a conversation with his disciples. He washes their feet, including Judas 
who is the antithesis to Mary, right? Mary spills that of greatest worth upon him. Judas takes that of greatest worth into himself. Those are two different gospels. Those are two competing houses of prayer. In 14, the very beginning of 14, in my father's house. And then it ends in 17 with a prayer. And this is the prayer in 17. Oh God, that they may all be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they may also be one in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me in verse 22, I have given them. Why? So that they may be one as we are one. I and them, you and me, that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me. Not a oneness based upon the reference point of the local sports team. Listen, I'm a fan, not of the local sports team. <laughs> but I'm a fan of sports, right? One, listen, one of the things about sports or anything in life, military, organizations, right, businesses, if, 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 listen, if you don't have a common vision, if you're not on the same page, if there's not a healthy communication, you're not going to succeed. You can have a bunch of superstars on the same team and not win the championship. I'm thinking of somebody's name. I'm not going to say But Jordan won. Okay. Right? Listen. There, there must be, even in the world, as a reference point. But the kind of unity Jesus is talking about is not the local sports team or the local business. He says, even as you and I are one, you have given me your glory, the glory of oneness in family. I have given it to them. I have expressed to them what it looks like to be family on the earth. God, make them family on the earth like we're family in heaven. Make them, make them one that kind of way. Make them a house. Make them a house. Amen? A house of what? A house of prayer. A house of prayer. Our highest call in life is to minister to God as family. To minister to him. To minister before his face. Love is the greatest law. There's nothing, the scripture says, against the law of love. God wants love. To minister to him. Uh, I believe there are certain things, even as Mike's been sharing the last couple of days, prophetic narrative, things that we're going to see come to pass... In this house, I believe in our work in the Middle East, and I believe in works all over the world. God is raising up his house of prayer in the nations. A people, a family that mirrors divine family by virtue of divine communion. By virtue of divine communion. A people that look like Mary. Of Bethany. That sit at his feet to hear his word. If we don't sit at his feet to hear his word, we will hear and see everything else around us. And what does she see? What does Mary, what, I'm sorry, what does Martha see? If there's one church that I know of in America that has heard this passage more than anybody else I think is this church. <laughs> you guys could probably quote it backwards. <laughs> Luke 10, backwards. But what, what does Martha do in multiple languages? What, is, what does Martha do? She is serving. She's serving. Now listen, the third thing is nations. Service. Family. Prayer. Family, communion, service. The third thing is service. She's doing service without communion, at least in the moment. 
And what does it cause to come up inside of her heart? Oh, ish, it's, it, now there's breakdown on house because now she's, she's looking at her sister like. And then, and then she looks at the Lord funny too because she says, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the mission alone? Don't you care? Don't you see me out here working? Like the, like, like the Shunammite in Song of Songs chapter 1, who's been burned. Church hurt. People are going to disappoint you. Disappointment happens when, you, when we pin expectations on people that they were never meant to fulfill in our lives. Disappointment comes when we set expectations too high on man. Not that we should believe nothing. Oh, listen, we need to believe the best about people. Not that we should think of nothing of people, but we should pin all of our hopes on God and love people. So she looks at God and she says to, to God in the flesh there, she's looking at the Lord and she says, don't you care? Because for a moment she took her eyes off of Jesus, she, she, her heart, there was interruption. There was an interruption between her communion. She wasn't receiving. Listen, prayer at a heart level is conversation. It's, 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 God is inviting us into the divine conversation. He's inviting us. Have you ever been to like a, to a table? We just had dinner last night. It was good. Now they have dinner, I'm imagining every night, unless they're fasting. We were invited into the conversation. We were invited to the table, and we got to join the conversation, the family conversation. That's prayer. Prayer is when God invites his people to the table to join the Trinitarian conversation. That's prayer. He speaks, you listen like Mary, you speak back. You talk back. But when he speaks, it's not just the exchanging of information. No, as he's speaking, he's creating things on the inside of you. As he's speaking, he's inserting into us the very revelation of who he is, his nature. He speaks, his words are spirit and they're alive. Then we are animated by the spirit of God, empowered, we speak back. That's prayer. We're called to minister as priests before the Lord and nations. We are called to give our lives because of love, because of love, because fundamentally love gives. God, the famous passage, the famous passage every evangelist should know. God so loved the world, this is the gospel, that he gave. And the picture is God, who is the greatest missionary, the Son puts on flesh and leaves the glories and comforts of heaven and comes down to earth and humbles himself to such a stage that he actually has to learn the alphabet. Love. Love has to look like something and it looks like going and giving our lives, serving because of love. House prayer, and nations. God gives definition for his church. And so we'll close on this. Jesus is crucified, buried, and raised from the dead. That is the gospel. Amen? That's the gospel. You remove one of those elements, you have not preached the full gospel. But before he ascends, he says to his disciples, he says, go tarry in Jerusalem until the Spirit of God comes and endues you with power. And he ascends and he sits at the right hand of the throne. And we know from the scripture, as John the Baptist speaks of Jesus, he is the only one that has the authority and the right to baptize with the Holy Spirit from the right hand. 
If you want to know what Jesus is doing besides making intercession to his father for us forever as a priest, he is looking, always looking for a place he can lay his head. Listen, they said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. He said, foxes have homes that look like holes in the ground, right? Birds have homes that look like nests in a tree. The son of man doesn't have a home where he can lay his head. But the church, we are his home. We're his body. He's our head. He's ever looking for a place that looks like home. Why? Because he does one great work when he finds it. He pours out the mighty Holy Spirit of God. The manifest glory, not the omnipresence of God. Not even the felt presence of God, although that's part of it. No, the manifest glory of God. There are degrees to the presence of God. And we were created, we were created for him. Life does not make sense outside of the presence of God. The psalmist says, I looked around and I wondered to myself, why is it that your people suffer? But it seems like the evil prosper. They cheat, lie, steal, get ahead. And the psalmist says, but I'm persecuted for doing right. And he says, in my heart, he starts in his heart to get frustrated, that internal frustration. He says, until, you guys know this psalm, I think it's 77, he says, or 73, until I walked into the house of the Lord, the courts of the Lord, and I saw, and I understood their end is destruction. We live forever in his presence. Better is one day. Amen. Give glory to Jesus. Amen. Better is one day in the courts of God. Better is one day as a gatekeeper on the outer courts than years lived in the passing pleasures of sin that profit nothing. He has saved us by the blood of Jesus. He has redeemed us to a family. He has called us to commune with him, the, the greatest treasure of life. And he has invited us to obey him, to serve the nations around us. And it happens by being filled with the mighty and beautiful and powerful Spirit of God. He calls his disciples to where? An upper room. He just finished talking to them in John 14, or John 13 through 17, where? In an upper room. And he says, just like this, there's gonna be communion. Just like this, we're gonna share a table together. Family. Just like this, we're gonna go forth from here and thrust forth into the nations. And so, it says that they gather together, 120, and they are in the Greek. And anytime I'm in the presence of a Greek, I'm careful to say what the Greek says. It says, I think, it says, it says they were together together, meaning not just in the same room, but on a heart level. They were a house. They were a family. And what were they doing? Ministering to the Lord. Ministering to the Lord. And what happened? The Spirit of God came down. And in what form of all forms? In tongues of different languages that will communicate the beauty of Jesus to the nations. A fiery tongue. It could have been anything. It could have been a fiery hand. Right? It could have been a fiery foot. We know Jesus has one from Revelation chapter 1. Right? Feet that look like they're burnished, stuck in the fire. No, a fiery tongue. A tongue of communion. A tongue to sing to the Lord with. A tongue to, to speak to him with. A tongue to love your wife with. A tongue to preach the gospel with. A fiery tongue from heaven. A fiery tongue. And that's what Jesus wants to do tonight. He wants to baptize us with the Holy Spirit. Listen, people often ask us, they often ask us, what is your greatest need in Iraq? What's the greatest need that you have? And I usually say, do you have $10 million? No, I don't say that. No, no, I tell them, no, I don't say that. When I tell them, in all honesty and integrity of my heart, I say, I think to my, I thought about, I thought about this many, many, many times. Like really searched my heart. 
and thought to myself, God, what is the greatest need that we have? And there's many. Some of them are natural. We need labors. That's a great need, labors. Local labors. But then I, th I think to myself, no, all of them pale in comparison. They pale in comparison. I could write a list out, but one of them is, is, is far beyond the two through whatever. We need a mighty baptism in the glory of Jesus Christ, in the love of God, in the power of his spirit. We need to be immersed. I want to live from the place of, of the glory of God in his presence. May God find the Bethany in my home. May God find the Bethany in, in our ministry. May he find a Bethany where he can rest. Because if he is there, although the new Jerusalem might not be on earth, it's in my heart. It's in my heart. And all of life has purpose and meaning from that place. Amen. I want you guys to stand. I'm going to hand it over to Michael. But how many of you guys have expectation that tonight God is going to baptize us afresh with the Holy Spirit of God? Raise your hands to Jesus if that's you. Let's communicate that to Jesus if that's you. If you have expectation, listen, this is what he does from the right hand of glory. This is what he does. He makes intercession and he fills his house with the glory of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's receive right now. We're going to receive right now waves of the Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. Waves of power. Jess, would you come? Rev and uh, Miss Lucy, would you come? And Pastor Randy. Julie, please come as well. You know, the meal that unlocked Pentecost was the covenant meal. And I want us to take communion tonight. This is the covenant meal that unlocked Pentecost. So I want our ushers right now just to begin passing out communion. And then Josh, I want, or Josh, and that's prophetic, who knows? John, would you come? I want to sing about the blood for a moment. It reaches to the highest mountain. It reaches. To the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley the blood that gives me strength from death Yeah. 
from day to day it will never lose its power has everyone been served the elements does everybody have the elements if you do not would you just lift your hand I'm going to ask Pastor Paul Teske and Pastor Randy to come. Rev, I'd like you to pray and administer the bread. And Pastor Randy, I'd like you to do the blood. And when we're done, once we receive, once we receive communion, you know, it's not by mistake that they celebrated the supper in the upper room and that the Lord's presence and the Spirit fell in the upper room. Fire always falls on blood. So once they lead us in communion, uh, we're going to pray for you. I'm going to have Dave uh, begin the prayer. There's an anointing on you for it once they're done. But I want to say this to you. I don't want you receiving without faith tonight. Come. Bring your sickness to the table. Bring your brokenness, your weakness. You know, Mephibosheth was crippled, but his crippled legs were hidden at the table of the Lord, at the table of the king, at David's table. So Catherine Kuhlman used to say, if you're sick and you need a miracle, just give Jesus your body. So I want us to come by faith to the table tonight. And before Pastor Paul and Pastor Randy lead us, two wonderful men of God, I want us to examine ourselves as the scripture says. And if there's anything in your life that God is revealing, give it to him, ask for forgiveness, confess it, and he will. Paul wrote, that many do not discern the body and blood of Jesus and they have grown sick and fallen asleep early. In other words, taking communion improperly can actually bring sickness and death. Not discerning its beauty and what the scriptures say about it. But the beauty of that scripture is also this, that if taking it improperly brings sickness and death, to take it properly brings healing and life. Healing and life. And so this is a sacred moment. Come in faith tonight. Amen. Pastor Paul, would you come and serve us the bread of the Lord, the living bread? Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Just, just take a moment. I want you to go into your innermost place and confess all your sin to the Lord. We've sinned against the Lord in thoughts and words and deeds through omission and admission. We've done so much, but yet we have a redeeming God. And, and I want you for a moment to just ponder that this is not just a remembrance. This is not just a symbol. This is the living body and blood of Jesus Christ. This is a moment when the immortal and you, the mortal, will engage. The immortal God will step into you with his presence, his body and his blood, the blood that redeems you from your sin, and the body broken for your healing. And the immortal God was not, does not want to come into a vessel that is stained or tainted or sinful. So right now, just in a moment of silence, confess your sin to the Lord and say, Lord, I, I'm an empty vessel now. I'm laying, it all I'm laying it all before you to take away, to redeem by the blood of Jesus Christ before I receive your immortal touch on my mortal body right now. Confess that sin to the Lord. He is gracious and mercy to forgive you. So this is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken. This is the blood of Christ shed. On the night when Jesus was in that upper room, he took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it. And he said, take, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat this, remember me. And the same way after supper, he took the cup. He said, drink, this cup is the new promise, the new covenant in my blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This is the body and blood of Christ for you.
thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you grace us with your presence, that you come into us now with your mighty power. So now as you receive the body of Christ broken for your healing, receive it for restoration in your heart, healing in your mind, healing in your body, healing in your relationships. And in a moment, the blood is going to heal you in your relationship with God himself. So eat the body of Christ in faith as you receive the immortal presence of God into your life. Let's take the cup, hold it up, and let's look up to heaven. Let's look to him. We thank you, Father, that we were not redeemed with corruptible things, silver and gold, but the incalculable price of the precious blood of the Lamb slain for each one of us and for the world. We give you thanks and we honor the blood right now. We honor the blood. The life is in the blood. The life that we need is in the blood. It's by the blood. It's through the blood. The blood of the Lamb without spot and without blemish. And we thank you for the life and the power, the resurrection that is in this cup and the life of Christ and abundance that is in this cup. We thank you that all sin that's been confessed and brought before you is washed by the blood, every attack is broken by the blood. We thank you. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We cry out, the blood is sufficient. Until you return again, the blood has purchased salvation. And Satan and darkness has lost every right or claim against us. We thank you for the righteousness of this cup, the righteousness of Christ we receive as our righteousness. You clothe us with the righteousness of the blood, and we have acceptance before the throne of God, and we can be the temples of the living God and come boldly before the throne of grace because of the precious, precious blood of the Lamb, and we receive the life that we need, the forgiveness, the blessedness, the hope that we need now by the precious covenant unfailing blood of the lamb drink and receive in Jesus name now just keep your heart fixed on Jesus I never like to rush away or out of communion. Let the Lord do His work. I believe He's healing many of you now. I sense the power of the Holy Spirit. How many of you would say, I'm hungry for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit? Dave, would you come? Now as Dave prays, look to Jesus and pull this in. And however the Lord touches you, Receive it. Receive it. Hallelujah. Let this be our prayer tonight that God would make us a Bethany. Even right now with our own mouths, let's say, Lord, make me a Bethany. Make me a Bethany. Lord, make this house. Make this house a Bethany in the earth. Make this house a Bethany in Orlando. Lord, make us a Bethany, Lord. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Lift up your hands to God. Say to the Lord, Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill my family, my relationships with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with first love, Lord. 
Fill me, Lord, with power to be a witness. Right now, precious Jesus, seated at the right hand, I ask you. I ask you now, Lord, fill us afresh, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, glory of God. Come, glory of God. Come, fire of God. Come, beautiful Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit of God. Lord, you come like a still, small voice. You come like a mighty rushing wind. Lord, you come as you please. You come to reveal Jesus. Come tonight, Holy Spirit. We need you. Great bridegroom of your church, come. Fill us with the Holy Spirit tonight. Be filled afresh tonight. Receive tonight by faith. Be filled afresh with the Holy Spirit and the fire of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for filling us. Thank you, Lord, for visions and dreams, even this evening and this next season of head. Thank you, Lord, for being awakened from our sleep with a baptism of tears and a baptism of joy and speaking in tongues and prophecy. Thank you, Lord, for a baptism of the Holy Spirit, Lord. The fire of God would touch us in our sleep, Lord, even as we're going home in our chairs. Thank you, Lord, for the glory of God, the manifest presence of God. Lord, don't stay far off. Come near, Lord. Come near, Lord. Come near, Lord, the crowning jewel of redemption. Fill us, O oh God, with the Holy Ghost. Fill us with the Holy Ghost, Lord. We say today, Lord, that we're poor in spirit, Lord. We need you, God. We need you more than we need breath, more than we need water and food and sleep. Fill us, O oh God, with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving, he's moving. I'm telling you, he's moving. Just don't look around. Close your eyes, look to the Lord. And give yourself away in this moment. You can trust him. You can trust him. Thank you, Lord. Jimmy, receive right now. Receive right now, Jimmy. The fire of the Holy Spirit. Receive, Ryan, in Jesus' name. More, more. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Dion, receive. I'm telling you, the Lord's moving. Receive, Floyd Beth. The balm of Gilead. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Receive, Elizabeth, in Jesus' name. Receive, Amy and Joe. More, the fire of the Holy Spirit. Father, fill our team. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive Nico, receive Jones, receive all of you, all of you, all over the room. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Receive Lily, receive, receive. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I'd get lost right now if I were you. This is a wonderful, wonderful anointing. Receive Mackenzie, Jesus' name. I want Ryan and Dion to bring me Mackenzie and Jimmy, bring them to the front. You just get lost in God. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Keep them right there, right there. Alex, you'll need to help here. God, let your fire fall on them. Fill them up. The fire of the Holy Ghost, come on. Baptize them afresh. Like before they came to Jesus school. Baptize them afresh in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. More, Lord. 
More, Lord. More, Lord. Gina, come out here. Ryan, get Gina. Father, may she never forget the weight of your glory. Never. May she never forget it. Not a day in her life. The substance of the Holy Spirit. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 I said, Hallelujah. And you worship Him, and He just keeps moving, He feeds the hungry. feeds the hungry with himself you watching on your in your homes I pray the power of the Holy Ghost would fall in your living room in that bedroom in that dorm room in that hospital room get up out of that bed in Jesus name the fire of God fall and the strength of the Holy Ghost flood your body all of you weak all of you suffering Every broken home be filled right now with the presence of God. I pray that what's happening here in this room would fill your house in Jesus' name. That your children who are wayward would be convicted under the heavy weighty glory of God. As they walk in, they'll serve the Lord. Lord, fill Lily in Jesus' name. Fill Lily in Jesus' name. Our whole worship team. This whole row and Kathleen and Nathan and their children. Fill us. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. I tell you what, I don't know if he's touching you, but I, he is coursing through my veins right now. Coursing through my veins. It's moments like these that turn people into champions for God. It's not because of their skill set. It's because of the anointing. He's marking some of you right now. Father, make us a Bethany here. Make us a house of Bethany, a house of your presence. Lord if you're a pastor here a full-time pastor I want you to lift both hands in the air and wave at me just just wave them like this you've come in for a touch from God close your eyes lift your hands to heaven father in Jesus mighty name fill them all let your glory come upon them and let their churches be burning infernos. Kill the fear of man in them. Kill the fear of man in them. Kill the fear of man in these pastors. Let the one thing be their only thing. Jesus' name. I'm telling you, I feel that I have felt this before. You can turn it off if you like, but if you yield, God will move. God will move. He's wanting to be wanted, seeking to be sought, wanting to be wanted, seeking to be sought right now. Esther, are you down there, Esther? Come forward, come, come up here. Esther's our children's pastor. Let the glory of God fall on her. 
In the mighty name of Jesus. Dion, Ryan, put your hands on her. Fill her and fill our children. Fill our children with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Give us a children's revival. Mark the children in such a way that will convict their parents of mixture. Give our children visions and dreams, a hunger for your holy word, and the power of the Holy Ghost to come upon our children. Come on, grab this, pull it in. Look, it's moments like this where God answers prayer. It's moments like this because when Jesus is in the room, faith is available. You can ask amiss in moments that are not like this. You can ask once in a moment like this and it's granted, I'm telling you. Ask the Lord, save my children, touch my children, anoint my children, call my children, speak to my children, grab my children. Father, grab my children in Jesus. Touch them now in Jesus. Give Esther a burden, your burden for children. your burden. Your burden. Nari enti elefenti ora damanti erbe kenti erbe ke marba kanti elfendo. Just, just pray in the spirit here. Minti ora randi erefendi ora. You in your homes, I'm telling you. You don't have to be a spectator. God will fill that living room. Fill that bedroom. Fill that college campus. Lord Jesus, move on these campuses. I have a strong sense that there's people watching from their dorm rooms. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Father, blow through our nation, our city, this house, trust us with your manifest glory. Have mercy on our weakness. Have mercy on our weakness. Live with us. Oh, live with us, live with us, live with us, Jesus, live with us. The entrance of your word bringeth light. Let your word go forth in power from this place. Let your word go forth in power in every home. Shine in our homes. Some of you have children who grew up in the Lord. And they've gone their own way. And even those who are still saved, but they're not walking with Jesus. I'd ask right now, get them, Lord. Grab them. Grab them. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor Randy pray in just a moment to declare a prophetic blessing over you. But I feel a song stirring in my soul. There is a river. It flows from deep within. You know it? Yeah. Uh, Jesse, come here. Do you know it? She'll help you with the words. When we sing this song, I'm telling you, that river's gonna, it's gonna tap the dam that's been pent up in your soul. It's kept you from drinking. You gotta lose your dignity. You need the Lord, Jesus.
Just give him the words in his ear. There is a river that flows from deep within. That flows from deep within. There is a fountain. There is a fountain. That frees the soul. That frees the soul from sin. Come to the water. Come to the water. There's a vast supply. There's a vast supply. There is a river. There is a river. That never shall run dry. That never shall run dry. Sing that again, John. There is a river. Flows from deep within. Flows from deep within. There's a fountain. There is a fountain. It frees the soul from sin. It frees the soul from sin. Come to the water. So come to the water. There's a vast supply. There is a vast supply. There is a river. It's flowing right now. There is a river never shall run dry. Never shall run dry. One more time, John. Oh, there is a river flows from right here. Flows from deep that within. Flows from deep within. There's a fountain if you drink. There is a fountain. <laughs> Freeze the soul from sin. Freeze the soul from sin. So come to the water. So come to the water. A vast, vast supply. There is a vast supply. There's a river. Oh, there is a river. It'll never run dry. That one more time. One more time. Pastor Randy, would you come? Oh, there is a river. It flows from deep within. It flows from deep within. There's a fountain. There is a fountain. That frees the soul. That frees the soul from sin. So come to the water. So come to the water. There is a vast supply. There is a river. Never shall run dry. That never shall run dry. Pastor, would you just declare a blessing? Yeah, we just speak, Father, over this people that they will receive all that has been spoken, declared, and preached this night. Father, we thank you that you said, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink, and out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. We thank you for the rivers that will never run dry in our life. And Lord, I just speak and declare that this is a people of glory. This is a last day's house of glory. And I thank you, Lord, even if we've seen in the spirit, Lord, that there's already a place being built in the spirit of glory, that you're using this people to release glory of the Son of God in the midst of darkness. And we thank you that glory shall cover this people and it shall be bridal love and they shall come into the bridal chamber of Christ. Lord, we thank you that you said it would be a glory that would be a tabernacle over them night and day. It would be a Sukkot, a place of encounter and meeting with the Father's love. The Father supplies all night and day. There's no limit to this people where you will take them. We thank you that it's a glorious hope 
that this is a place of hope and healing and encounter and deliverance and freedom. And we thank you, Lord, that your glory is a place of safety. And your people will be safe in this hour and they will be kept from temptation, darkness. And we thank you, Lord, we bless them. And we thank you, Lord, that this is the substance of their life. Let them have encounters. Let them have dreams. Let them know you face to face, Lord. All that you died to give them, may they receive in Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. I love you. Jesus loves you more. See you Sunday morning. God bless you. Come on, give the Lord praise. Let's thank him. Hallelujah. God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus shed his blood. He died on the cross. He was buried. He rose again from the dead on the third day to give you life and to prove that he is the son of God who he said he was. Today he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And for those who belong to him, he is interceding for them eternally. And that same Jesus will return again. He will crack the eastern sky like a whip. And with ten thousands upon ten thousands, he will return in glory. In 2017, we received a word from Lou Engle that we really believe is the word of the Lord for our school, our house, and the entire ministry. Lou said that the greatest musicians in the world, and the greatest vocalists in the world, the greatest worshipers, that they would descend upon Orlando, Florida to Jesus' image. And that word began to burn in us, and we began to dream about what it would look like to one day have a school where people would come to worship Jesus and be in his presence and receive his word. And a church was birthed in that same worshiping atmosphere. And what a beautiful opportunity that we have as a Jesus people to come before him and to be at his feet and to pour ourselves out before him. Worship has the potential to unlock things that really nothing else in the world can unlock. And so we decided about a year ago to launch a, an opportunity within the Jesus School setting for those worshipers, for the musicians, for the singers, for the dancers, for the artists, for the poets. And this is going to be a place where you can come and you can learn and you can grow. And we have highly trained instructors who are going to be coming they're going to be teaching instruments. They're going to be teaching vocals. Anything that you can think of with worship, it's going to be there. The worship is not about us. We worship for Him. So we want to invite you to come. Come worship the King of Kings with us. So come and be a part of what the Lord is doing. Come and give your heart to the Lord. Come and surrender yourself to the Lord. And let's be ones that are willing to rise and go. And we decided to name it after Bethany, that wonderful house where Jesus was ministered to, that place where the feelings of Jesus were preeminent. It was a place where he desired to not only move and work and teach and do wonderful things, but a place where he would be adored, a place where he would rest, 
a place where he would run to so that he would receive ministry. And so now Jesus School has this space that's been created for all of you who are desiring to use your vocal gifts, your instrumental gifts, your gifts of worship, your dancing gifts, and give them to Jesus. Jesus would make this a Bethany, that he'd make our lives a Bethany, where he'd come and rest and recline among us. You were created to experience the presence of God in a way that will transform your life, family, and the world. We understand how difficult it can be to find time to attend a school where you study the Word of God, grow in your faith, and build a community of believers. And that's why we created Jesus School Online. We believe that the Holy Spirit is unlimited in His reach. No matter where you live or what stage of life you're in, we invite you to take part in this amazing online opportunity. You'll be led by world-renowned speakers and worship leaders. You will be taught to seek Jesus daily, be activated in the power of the Holy Spirit, learn to share the gospel, and build community with Jesus people from around the world. At Jesus School Online, we are passionate about seeing a Jesus people raised up to shake the nations for the glory of God. You were created for this moment in history. The Jesus people are emerging and we have one ambition. Jesus himself. Will you join us?